Welcome to Chaos Cortex. Hey guys, welcome back. So I've had a few requests, um, specifically about my R2D2 video, um, to kind of explain some of the different techniques that I used in Tinkercad. Um, and actually, I think I'm going to be posting a um, a longer, slowed down version of the the actual video files that I have. Um, creating R2-D2 and then maybe do a voiceover and talk a bit during it to um, maybe just provide some commentary and um, to, to maybe help some other people that are trying to figure out how to do specific things. Um, it was all kind of a blur um, now looking back but um, and you know everything I do in Tinkercad I kind of just go in and mess around until I get it and if you study those little sections that I have that I show the really sped up version of me creating things you can tell because there's a lot of times that I'll go down one path trying to do something and just figure out it's just not going to work like that and then you know I'll delete all of it and then go back and retry again um, and so I don't know that um, the way that I do things is necessarily the best way to do it in fact I'm sure it's not um, but it gets the job done, and really that's all I'm looking for at this stage. Um, and so, with all that aside, um, this video specifically, I thought I'd talk about how to make gears in Tinkercad. And so we're just going to make some really, really simple, um, normal gears. You know, we're not going to do beveled or anything like that just yet. But before I get into this, if you are doing a project that you need like some sort of super um, super high performance, super detailed gears that need to be precise, um, this method is probably not the best um, for your scenario. But for things like you know very small gears that just need to work, um, this will do just fine. So if the gears are very important and you need them to be accurate, I would suggest going out and doing the research and um, all of the math required to kind of um, get your gear ratios correct and all that and the specific shapes of the, the teeth because I'm just going to use elongated cylinders and that's they're close to the shape but they're not the actual shape that real gears use. Um, so this is just a really, really simple simplistic way of doing gears. So let's get into it. Of course we're going to start with a cylinder. Let's go ahead and make it eight millimeters high and then we are going to go um, 12 wide and 12 deep. That'll give us a good foundation for the center of the gear. Um, and then we're just going to bring out another cylinder. I'm going to bring that down and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one millimeter. So we'll make that one millimeter wide and then we are going to make it three millimeters long. And then we need to center it. So let's do this and as we can see our um, our cylinder is centered on that little grid square there. So now we can take this and go towards the middle and since it's only one we're going to need to go down to 0.5 to center it and there we have it. So then we'll go back to one just to make things easier on ourselves, and you'll want it just about one millimeter penetration right there. So um, this is normal sitting outside of it just move one millimeter inside of it and you'll be good to go. And make sure that this is directly centered on one of the sides. And so a really, really easy way of doing this is if you hit Control D, it duplicates it. And then I just move it over until it's in the same position on the other side. And now if you select both of them, Tinkercad will actually make the pivot point the center of the objects. And the center of these two masses just happens to be the exact center of the cylinder as well. So um, what we can do is let's hit control D again to duplicate them and then I'm going to rotate it let's just go 20 degrees. I think that'll do just fine. So a fun fact about Tinkercad is that if you duplicate something and then perform an action on it like rotating it, translating it, scaling it, anything like that 
um, and then keep duplicating that object, it will continue to apply those um, it will continue to apply those effects to it. So where we just rotated that, if we hit Control D a bunch of times, it will actually go all the way around the object. And then if we actually hit it one more time, we'll see that it lines up perfectly with our ones that were already there. And that's how we know that we've got a um, completely evenly spaced gear. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and group all those. And then you can see, boom, we've got a gear. You can put a hole through the center in order to put it over a rod or something like that. And then if we duplicate this, move it over to about there, and then we rotate it a little bit, we can actually see that they will fit up pretty nicely. And now, once again, these are not perfect. So if you need to have your gears be precise and perfect, you're going to want to do a bit more research than this. But... I've found that with these gears, once you 3D print them, um, they roll together extremely smooth. They're extremely smoothly. There's no give, um, and they actually work extremely well. So now, one thing we can do, say that we wanted to actually have some sort of reduction um, in our gears. We can take this, uh, and I'll actually just, well, I'm going to delete that one because we rotated it. We'll just start fresh with this one, and let's ungroup. And then I'm actually going to delete all but one of those, and move it out of the way for the time being. Now I'm actually going to scale this up to, um, I believe, twice the size. So let's go um, 24. And then we will center that again. That looks like it's centered. And then we'll just take this. If you need to have even crazier sizes than that, that it's just not a multiple of each other, um, the math gets a little bit harder. But for something that's just double the size, it's very, very easy because we can just have the angle um, that we rotated the um, pegs around. So if you remember on the first one, we rotated the pegs um, 20 degrees each time and went all the way around. So this one's twice the size, so we need twice the number of pegs around it. Um, and actually, I think they're called teeth on gears. I'm not 100% sure on that, so teeth. Um, we need twice the number of teeth. So we have to have the um, angle, and that will give us the um, desired number of pegs, and it should line up over here. So we've got them there. Um, the pivot point is in the center of the mass right there, so we will duplicate, and then we are going to rotate this 10, and then we'll just keep hitting Control D until we are all the way around the object here. Then we will group it, and let's send that over, and rotate this. So as you can see, we, see, we've got the same teeth right there, it's just now the other gear is twice the size. So as this one rotates, it will rotate the inner um, shaft of this quite a bit slower. So there you get the re reduction in speed, but increase in torque. Um, and you could go the other way around too. Um, if you rotate this one, these, these teeth will turn this one much faster. But you'll also get the reduction in torque. So... Um, doing techniques like this, you can actually create your own 3D printed gearboxes, and um, they, they actually work surprisingly well. I was very skeptical, and since the, since the teeth are so small, you know, I wasn't sure how strong they'd be, how well they'd work, but um, they, they hold up incredibly well. So um, if nothing else, it's just something you should try to mess around with and print yourself some gear. It's really fun to do, and... Um, you know, when you show people, they're always really impressed with how well they actually work and spin together. So, uh, try to come up with some crazy gearbox. And if you do, let me know. Um, and if this video helped you out at all, let me know. Um, I love hearing from you guys. And if I can help you guys learn at all, um, I am more than happy to do so. So, I think I will leave this video at that. Um, if you would like to see anything else specific um, as far as my Tinkercad techniques, 
Um, let me know in the comments and I will share those as well. Um, I will be doing one more video I think next week that will be um, how to put details and stuff on cylindrical objects and spherical objects and stuff like that. Um, so be sure to check back for that and subscribe if you have not. And that's all for me. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. It helps me out a lot. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at ChaosCoreTech. And once you've done all that, check out some of these other videos I've made. Thanks for watching, guys.